Tesla's Model S is the brand's original EV, an electric, large, luxury fastback with around 400 miles of range. In this improved form, it's now sleeker and more sophisticated and has almost supercar-style acceleration. In its current form, the car has been updated with a completely new interior, and there's now a choice of either dual-motor or played all-wheel drive variants with 100 kilowatt-hour battery outputs. Here's what the future looks like, and it might just be cause for celebration. Would it be too much to call Tesla's Model S a game changer? We don't think so. Back in 2012, this car launched what is now the world's best known automotive EV brand on an unsuspecting world. It shocked the established brands into getting on with the electric era. And it was a luxury executive EV benchmark that others aspired to for nearly a decade. Originally engineered with a goal of creating the best car in the world. Now you'd think though that after well over 10 years on sale it'd be time for a completely new design to face a flood of fresh rivals. Instead what we got in 2023 was this heavily revised version of the original. Will that be enough for Tesla in this segment? Well that's what we're here to find out. Now this wasn't the first Model S update, uh, the earlier one happened in 2016 when the car lost the original version's fake grille. But it's by far the most significant change to this Tesla yet, as you'd hope after a decade on sale and with several hundred thousand examples pounding global roads. Not that you'd know that from the remarkably subtle exterior differences between this current era car and the original, but look a little closer. There's a completely redesigned cabin. Uh, the body structure is different. The suspension's been re-engineered and the complicated, confusing range of single motor versions have long been dropped with the dual motor variants that remain now using a larger and completely different 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. For UK customers though, all of this excellent development work could be sabotaged by this US brand's confusing decision to restrict imports here to left-hand drive models only, with the same directive also applied to the latest versions of this car's SUV Model X stablemate. Right-hand drive Model S production was suspended in 2020 and never restarted. You're really going to have to want this Tesla to put up with that, but you might. For a start, even in its standard dual motor form, it's frantically fast, with the top tri-motor played version that we're trying here going further, claiming to be the fastest accelerating production car in the world. If you thought the million pound Bugatti Veyron held that title, think again. Actually, only the vastly more expensive Porsche Taycan Turbo GT gets close. Yet this is achieved while operating in a level of silence that'll make a Rolls-Royce seem hopelessly unrefined. But then the Model S has always been a car that thinks way beyond the box. So does Elon Musk, Tesla brand co-creator and co-founder of a PayPal organization that's given him such reserves of operating capital that he could afford to spend as much as was necessary on the original design for this car. If you think that you've seen everything in automotive terms, well, you haven't. Not until you've tried a Model S anyway. And that's just what we're gonna do in the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. Back in 2013, getting into a Model S seemed futuristic. It still does, especially if you're in a version fitted with Tesla's controversial steering yoke, replacing the conventional wheel still available as an alternative. We've got that here. Now, whatever tiller you decide upon, a major change with this updated model is that it will inconveniently be mounted on the left rather than on the right hand side of the cabin and there are no stalks protruding from behind it for indicating or gear shifting. Instead, Model S software decides what direction you want to travel in, or you can override that electronic decision via the touchscreen. 
Now get to grips with all of this and you're ready. But for what? Well, for something very fast indeed, especially in the case of this top played version. We'll get to that in a moment. But abruptly striking speed in a luxury sporting EV like this has a very short shelf life of admiration. It wows you on the test drive and in the first few days of ownership, but then on public roads becomes something of an irrelevance or even an irritation. What are the longer lasting driving virtues you would ideally be seeking from a big six-figure luxury segment EV contender like this? Well, we'd be looking for hushed refinement, a smooth step off the line, an emphasis on mid-range rather than start-off acceleration, and around the turns, something of the handling agility of a smaller car. In both the standard dual motor and top played forms that make up this updated range, the Model S delivers all of these things and more. As you'd expect from an EV, there's no gearbox as such, so power transfer is even smoother than the best automatics. And unlike the two-speed EV transmission in a rival Porsche Taycan, this one has just a single speed. The motors it's linked to now draw their energy from a completely redesigned battery that's not only big at 100 kWh, but also has triple the amount of thermal capacity, so can deliver 15% more energy for sustained performance during spirited driving. All very interesting, but before we get into any of this in more detail, there's the question for UK customers of whether this car is now hamstrung by its left-hand drive-only cabin format. Well, is it? Maybe not by quite as much as you might expect. Yes, you'll be irritated when entering car parks or dealing with toll booths, but on the move in suburbia, you adjust to this continental driving arrangement quite quickly, aided by a plethora of cameras and radar sensors that clue you in to vehicles, pedestrians, or bikes in your blind spot. It's a bit different at speed on twistier, narrower roads. Seated on the left, in what is a pretty wide car, you might not feel completely comfortable in pushing on through tight corners on your favorite B-road back double. If you do summon up the confidence to treat this Tesla like the sports saloon it's trying to be, you might expect the prodigious 2.2 ton body weight to weigh things down somewhat. But this Tesla actually handles a good deal more sharply than you might imagine. The seats don't hold you in particularly tightly, but there's plenty of grip from its bespoke Michelin rubber. Body roll is well controlled and traction is aided by the way the all-wheel drive system has been programmed to constantly shift power from front to rear to keep each motor in its power and efficiency sweet spot. The initial impression of the steering is that it's fast and precise, but there doesn't seem to be much benefit in specifying your Model S with the Thunderbird style yoke controller that uh, is optional here. Unlike the yoke you get with the one motion grip setup offered by Toyota and Lexus, which cleverly allows for 150 degrees of movement so that you never have to take your hands off the wheel, this one doesn't control a steer by wire system. Here in contrast, uh, this unusual tiller seems purely here for futuristic aesthetics. Well, we've got the normal wheel here, and whatever kind of wheel you specify on your Model S, the steering rack can be switched between three settings, comfort, normal, and sport. But none of these do much to improve feel or feedback, which in terms of inspiring cornering confidence is less than ideal in a car boasting reserves of power this great. Just how much power depends, of course, upon the Model S variant you select. We told you earlier that there were now two, and we can't understand why the standard dual motor version wouldn't be quite sufficient for anyone shopping in this segment. It has a motor on each axle, together developing 661 horsepower, allowing for an uber rapid 3.1 second 0 to 60 mile an hour sprint time, and a very un-EV like limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. But there's another wilder option. If, like Elon Musk, you're the kind of person for whom too much is never enough, uh, then only the top tri-motor played version we're trying here will do. Musk once promised us there'd be an even faster played plus variant, subsequently cancelled. And it's hard to imagine how fast that would have been because this ordinary played is in every way extraordinary against the stopwatch. 
an extra motor added onto the rear axle boosts total power output to an astonishing 1,020 horsepower split roughly 3070 between the front and rear axles. There's a 421 horsepower motor at the front and two 414 horsepower motors at the rear. These all together generating a scarcely believable 1,420 newton meters of torque on tap. As a result, Tesla claims a 0 to 60 mile an hour time of just 1.99 seconds, which should you be able to replicate it would make this the world's fastest accelerating production car. Top speed is 200 miles an hour. The only car with four or five seats that can get remotely close to this kind of pace is Porsche's Taycan Turbo GT, and that's vastly more expensive. For this kind of acceleration, you need to engage the car's provided drag strip drive mode, which sets the car into what Tesla calls its cheetah stance, lowering the front to combat front end lift, giving the front motor the best chance of getting its torque to the tarmac. You'd hardly ever bother with that unless you were engaging in tire smoking test track heroics, nor would you usually concern yourself with the provided track mode settings the car offers to vary handling balance, stability assist and regenerative braking. That track section has settings for drifting, post lap cooling and brake temperatures, plus a dash cam for recording your circuit exploits. Even in its more ordinary public road orientated sporty drive modes, this car remains frantically fast. Engage played and 60 mile an hour flashes by in 2.7 seconds. In sport, which you'll prefer because it gives you a bit more throttle travel to play with, the sprint time is 3.7 seconds, which is still quicker than, say, Ford's fastest production model, the Mach-E GT. It's a bit of a different story if you stick to the more normal chill drive setting that you'll need to get anywhere near this Model S Plaid's quoted EV drive range figure of 373 miles, 21 miles less than the ordinary dual motor version. With chill engaged in a Model S Plaid, 60 miles an hour takes 7.3 seconds. Stick to the fast modes and the reality of this car's performance is difficult to accurately share. There's a roller coaster like strap in and hold on vibe with instant urge that means overtakes don't really need to be planned, they just happen. And when the road opens up and your right foot flexes, the horizon streams towards you as if on fast forward, reminding you that the Model S Plaid still holds the coveted Nürburgring Nordschleife lap record for an electric production car. But as we suggested earlier, ultimate speed isn't the same thing as ultimate driving engagement, an area where Tesla still has work to do if it's to match longer established brand rivals like Porsche in this segment. But Musk and his men are getting there, as we've realized in comparing our driving notes against the last time we tried a Model S in its original form. Ride quality in this updated design is very much better, even on this test car's big 21 inch wheels. And that's a crucial improvement because for all its speed, this is a luxury conveyance first and foremost. To achieve this, Tesla's standardized air springs and completely redesigned the suspension, changing it from a four link to a more sophisticated five link setup. The resulting damping isn't quite class leading, but set the car in its supplest comfort drive mode and it cruises over tarmac tears and speed humps in its default medium suspension height setting. Most of the time you'll leave the air springs in their automatic setting, which is linked to GPS data. So when the car knows it's on a highway, it'll lower itself to reduce drag. But you might want to intervene too, say if you're visiting someone with a steep driveway. In that situation, you can raise the ride height to suit to a high or very high setting. Better still, the car will remember the adjustment that you've made and log its GPS location so that if you ever return to the same driveway, the ride height will automatically be raised once more as you approach. Via the center screen, you can even access complicated suspension, compression and rebound data. Earlier we talked about this car's hushed refinement. Well, that's impressive, but we should also point out that six-figure segment rivals, Porsche's Taycan Turbo for instance, now do better. 
and cars like that also offer a much better braking setup, mainly because, amazingly, Tesla still hasn't yet got round to developing a stopping system that blends regenerative and friction braking together, the kind of thing that you'll find in virtually every modern EV these days. Instead, with the Model S, even this very fast one, the disc brakes are only worked by the pedal. Uh, regen only activates when you lift off the throttle and won't helpfully cut in to assist should you be forced to slam on all the anchors. And trying to arrest 1,020 horsepower merely with a set of conventional steel discs is, we suspect, a recipe for steaming brakes in fairly short order should you take to the track with this car. Talking of brake regen, um, unlike its rivals, Tesla's never bothered with offering its customers lots of options for varying the strength of brake energy harvesting. Now you might also be interested to know that a Model S can now tow up to 1600 kilograms. An incorporated trailer mode will help here. There's also a provided slip start system to help free the vehicle in snow, sand or mud. Let's finish with a word on driver assist tech since it's such a major part of this car's considerable repertoire. As almost everyone knows by now, this Model S has so many cameras, sonars and radar sensors with real-time traffic updates that Tesla, if it was allowed to by legislation, could easily set it up to completely drive itself without the driver even needing to look through the windscreen. It's a bit ironic then that the self-driving capability this car is currently allowed to have covered off by what Tesla calls its autopilot system is pretty rudimentary by current class standards. There's an intrusive lane keep assist system, adaptive cruise control that's slow to accelerate and a lane following feature that can't tolerate any manual steering corrections at all which might encourage you to turn it off. For all that though, we still love the sheer connectedness of this car. To take just one example, if you sync your Model S with your online calendar, it'll check current traffic conditions to determine how much time is needed to make your first meeting of the day. In the morning, it can turn on its climate control system in readiness for you and even open your garage door before you stroll in. Plus, in other markets, and probably soon in this one, it can be programmed to pull itself out of its garage and meet you at the curb. In other words, you get the point. This is still, in every sense, quite a game changer, as Tesla always intended that it should be. Despite all the changes that have gone on under the skin, at first glance, Tesla's kept Model S visual updates to a minimum, which means that as before, if you're of the opinion that futuristic technology should come in futuristic packaging, then you might still find the styling of this car to be surprisingly conventional. It's certainly the kind of look that a buyer in the luxury segment would be used to, but only because Tesla has wisely chosen to follow customer expectations in making it so. It's handsome though, the original exterior shape being the work of ex-Mazda designer Franz von Holzhausen, who previously worked on the new Beetle and the Pontiac Solster sports car. Now it's hard to see those influences here, but there are certainly plenty of others. And what matters is that as a total package, there's probably something to please almost everyone. From the side, the updates are subtle, though an original owner would appreciate that the uh, proportions are now more muscular, especially at the rear. Wider arches give the car a squatter stance and house staggered performance wheels that keep the car planted with 19-inch rims on the standard dual motor variant and big 21-inch alloys on this top played version, which are wrapped in super grippy Michelin Pilot Sport 4S rubber. The silhouette sleeker too. Uh, Tesla now claims this to be the most aerodynamic production car on earth with a drag coefficient of just 0.208 CD. Were you to look beneath this car, you'd find the surface of the underside to be completely smooth, with no prop shaft or bulky differentials to spoil the airflow, and of course, no exhaust pipe either. Here in profile, you begin to appreciate just how sizable this Model S really is. 
though the wheelbase is a fraction shorter than something comparably priced like a BMW i5, the front and rear overhangs are longer, giving a total length of nearly five meters that's much closer to the kind of BMW i7 or Mercedes EQS that sits in the next segment up. That bulk's well disguised though, particularly in the way the bodywork flows over the front wheel arches and forms these shoulders that run to the rear haunches. Now the main way that you'll identify this revised design is by this restyle front bumper which makes a remarkable amount of visual difference and is accompanied on this played version by a bespoke lower front splitter above which is a large black lower intake that takes care of cooling. The LED headlamps feature upper daytime running light framing but not the now expected adaptive matrix tech and there are further smart lighting strips on either corner. The lift back rear end is neatly styled too, with complex light units linked by this black branded trim strip. This played version gains a subtle carbon fibre boot spoiler and a revised lower diffuser. As before, a hidden charging flap is concealed on the side of the left hand tail light. Approach with a charging connector and it springs open. Of course, what's more significant is what you can't see, the 100 kilowatt hour Panasonic battery with its cylindrical nickel cobalt manganese cells that both versions of this car use has been completely redesigned in construction, cooling and mounting. And the cradle that holds the rear motors and suspension back here is bespoke to this played version as it has to be to take the twin motors on the rear axle. Move to take a seat inside and as before, the door handles spring out to meet you. Is that an unnecessary draw on the battery? Well, no, not really. Because the handles retract to a position completely flush with the bodywork, the power they draw is more than compensated for by the reduction in drag they provide. After the very gently evolved exterior, it's something of a surprise to take a seat inside and find an interior that's completely different from that of the earlier cabin in almost every way. Not least in the way that it now makes you sit on the wrong side of the car, thanks to Tesla's newfound refusal to build this car in right-hand drive form. Not a single component is shared with the original Model S, not even this huge 17-inch centre screen, which is now landscape rather than portrait in format. One change we'd expected that hasn't happened is that there's still a separate instrument screen ahead of you. On smaller Teslas, drive instruments are confined to the near side of the central monitor. This test car doesn't have this redesigned cabin's real talking point, the optional aircraft style yoke that can optionally replace this conventional steering wheel. When fitted, it gives this Model S a Thunderbird style that suits the futuristic vibe the designers were clearly looking for which is intended to compensate you for the lack of the kind of wood, metal and stitched door and dashboard leather that you'd usually expect to find on a luxury saloon commanding a near six-figure asking price. Yes, build quality is a bit better than it used to be. The vegan leather feels quite realistic. The Alcantara roof and pillar lining's lovely. And there are a few strips of carbon fiber in this top played version, but you don't feel spoiled in the way that you should be by a car of this price. And this rough fabric on the door cards has no place in a car of this price. In true Tesla fashion, the vibe here is very minimalistic, even more so now that the brand has done away with the column stalks previously provided for indicating and gear changes. Instead, the Model S guesses your intended direction of travel and requires you to confirm its prediction by tapping the brake pedal. Or you can just use a provided slider on the side of the center screen though that's partly obscured by the right-hand side of the wheel. As for the wipers and indicators, well, they're now controlled with capacitive buttons on the steering tiller. The car uses its cameras and a steering angle sensor to know when to cancel the indicators, which seems a very complicated way of fixing something that didn't really need to be fixed. As we said in our driving section, we're not sure we'd bother with the option of the steering yoke, but we do like the redesigned TFT instrument screen you view above it, the screen we mentioned earlier. Tesla hasn't taken the opportunity EV architecture offers of providing a completely flat floor under the center screen. 
Instead, there's a high center console, forward of which is an angled compartment with twin wireless charging mats. The reorientated 17 inch landscape monitor just above, which used to look so vast, no longer seems quite as huge in an era of infotainment setups like the enormous Mercedes hyperscreen layout. As before, this Tesla's monitor does without a lower rotary controller, but showcases a very good Google Maps navigation system, which you can either have full screen or part screen, the latter movable from side to side of the monitor via this arrow button on the far side of the display. The screen can now be tilted towards either passenger and has better super sharp graphics, though annoyingly Tesla still refuses to build an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto into it. As before, there's a web browser and a blind spot display. Uh, when you're parked, this monitor can stream TV shows and Netflix for you and has lots of games to while away charging time in its arcade section. We liked beach buggy racing. Plus, there's a built-in 22-speaker, 960-watt audio system with active road noise reduction. And Tesla's usual toy box section, which has everything from Santa's sleigh, a map of Mars, emissions, farting noises, a tracks feature on for creating music, a section for setting up nighttime light shows with the vehicle lights, and a romance section with a crackling open fire. Tesla also includes a karaoke sing-along music section too. Hours of fun. What else? Well, as a driver, you're sat fairly high up and there's a great driving position for longer journeys aided by 12-way power adjustable seats, the angling of the multi-power adjustable steering wheel and the redesign of both the door cards, which are scalloped nicely for your forearm, plus the center armrest is also perfectly positioned. There's certainly no excuse for not being comfortable thanks to a clever driver profile setup system that allows you to adjust seat, steering, and side mirror positions under your own name in the top left of the display. When you jump in and hit the button, everything's restored to your preferred position within seconds, apart from the rear view mirror. Is that something that's beyond the wit of Tesla to control? Uh, somewhat bizarrely, there's also no adjustment for seat belt height either. And we couldn't find a way to adjust the wheel that didn't see it slightly obscuring the swipe system for forward or backward motion on the side of the center screen. The brand's design team might also want to look at cabin storage space while they're about it, though you do at least now get the door pockets that were unaccountably missing from the original design. Most of your stuff will be stored somewhere in this deep, practical center console. It has two levels. Uh, the top one with a shallow cubby and twin cup holders. You can slide both of these receptacles out of the way to reveal a much deeper and larger stowage area below that also incorporates a couple of USB-C ports. As before, you'll look for ages for a way to open the reasonably sized glove box before discovering that there's a button for doing so buried away in the touchscreen menus. All-round visibility is obviously compromised by the left-hand drive seating layout and isn't helped by the wide rear pillar but once you adjust to being on the wrong side of the car, you'll find that your forward view out is decent and it's reasonably easy to judge where the nose is. Pressing the indicators gives you a video feed showing you what's on each side of the car and there's a constant diagram in the driver's display showing what's around you. Plus, as you would expect, there are all-round parking sensors and a reversing camera, which are useful because of the small rear screen. Right, time to take a seat in the rear. As before, the standards of head and legroom on offer are unremarkable for a car in this class, but what is impressive is this car's ability to comfortably look after three fully sized adults. The lack of a centrally placed rear transmission tunnel obviously helps in this, as does the shaping of a rear bench that's properly formed for a middle occupant, rather than confining them to a perch on an uncomfortably raised cushion. In EVs these days, the seat base doesn't usually slide because of the battery pack beneath the floor, but it's a bit disappointing to find that in this one, the backrest doesn't recline either, as it does in, say, a rival BMW i7 or various electric SUVs. Headroom's 
good even for six footers and even with this vast panoramic glass roof fitted which usefully lightens up the cabin and doesn't need a sunshade because it's been treated to filter out harmful rays. Not so good is the way that the rear seat squab is set quite low in relation to the floor which doesn't deliver an ideal seating position. Plus there's not much room to push your feet beneath the seat in front. A key improvement made to this improved design is the addition of this centre screen for rear seat folk which not only deals with rear cabin climate functions and seat heating but can also allow passengers to play arcade games and access the internet. Rear seat back pockets are missing but click on this soft touch button behind the seat and you get this centre armrest with cup holders. In addition, there are overhead reading lights and rear door pockets, plus overhead coat hooks, which are supposed to pop flush into the roof lining. Though, as you can see, this one doesn't. Now, before we start talking about luggage capacity, we'll mention that the option of adding in an occasional use rearward facing third seating row is no longer available on this car. Those seats used to neatly fold out from the boot floor when specified, but so cramped were they that few owners bothered to pay the extra to get them, hence their deletion here. And cargo space? Well, there's plenty of it. The lack of an engine means that the pointy end gets what Tesla calls a frunk, American for front trunk, you see. Flip the bonnet and there's 89 litres on offer. Some of the space you'd otherwise hope for under here, compromised by the front mounted motor. The dual motor or tri-motor drivetrains require a slight compromise in rear boot space too, but it's not hugely significant. And in any case, there's plenty of room to play with. The wide opening powered tailgate rises to reveal an enormous 793 litres of luggage space, much more than you'd get in a much pricier Mercedes EQS and sufficient to take up to 11 carry-on suitcases. There's also a decently sized deep well beneath the floor for all the charging cables, plus a lidded corner left compartment and a netted storage pouch on the right. Less good is Tesla's refusal to offer either a ski hatch or a proper 40-20-40 split for the rear backrest. So if you've rear seated passengers, long items like skis will have to go on the roof. There are buttons in the boot area to retract the seat backs. Use them to push forward the rear bench and up to 1,645 litres of nearly flat space can be opened up. With a left-hand drive only offering, Tesla wouldn't have made any sales headway with this car at all if it hadn't attached reasonable value pricing to it. And by and large, that's what we've got. At the time of this test in early spring 2024, the US brand wanted around 87,000 pounds for the standard dual motor version or around 102,000 pounds for the top played version we've been trying here. It's worth mentioning that at the time of filming, it wasn't possible to custom order this Model S. Uh, instead, you had to go to the Tesla website and pick from an in inventory of completely new cars, though there's a reasonable number to choose from. If you buy one of these, you'd better hope that Tesla doesn't restart right-hand drive Model S production in a couple of years, because if it does, the retained value of your left hooker is obviously going to fall through the floor. Earlier we mentioned the value perspective. That's underlined by the way that what you're getting here is a car nearly as large as a boardroom segment luxury EV saloon, like say a Mercedes EQS or a BMW i7, both of which have six figure price starting points. Yet for it, Tesla wants pretty much the kind of money you'd uh, need for a comparably performing and comparably specified slightly smaller executive class EV model, like say a BMW i5 or a Mercedes EQE. Porsche's Taycan and Audi's e-tron GT Quattro are a little smaller and less practical too, but cost more than a dual motor Model S. As for this ultra high performing Model S played, well, it's no longer quite true to say that there's nothing quite like it, 
Porsche's Taycan Turbo GT gets within a whisker of this top Tesla's thrilling performance, but will cost you vastly, vastly more. Supposedly very fast segment rivals like the Mercedes AMG EQE 4Matic Plus and the Audi RS e-tron aren't really in the same performance ballpark, but cost more anyway. If having considered all of that and tried a Model S to make sure that you're not put off by the left-hand drive format, if you're still interested, you'll want to know about standard kit and about the specification options. So let's look at that now. The specification bit isn't too difficult. At the time of filming, there were just two exterior paint color choices that we could find in the inventory, uh, solid black or deep blue metallic. That's what we've got here and three interior color shades. Most of the inventory cars seem to come in cream or all black trim. Now you can choose between the yoke steering wheel or stick with the conventional one we've been trying here. And wheel choice is between 19 and 21 inches with the bigger rims fitted to this plaid, but also available for the dual motor version. Standard, of course, is the usual high level of Tesla MediaTek, accessible via the car's huge 17-inch centre touchscreen. This is your access point for a built-in 22-speaker, 960-watt audio system, as well as Google Maps, that's the Google navigation system. Uh, you get a web browser and streaming services, plus you can access various apps like Spotify, though Tesla still refuses to build in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There's also Tesla's useful Sentry system, which can video an interior break-in while you're away from your car. As usual with infotainment screens these days, this one continually updates itself over the air, which means that you'll be getting into this car one morning and finding it able to do something that it couldn't do yesterday. All the usual executive niceties feature, of course, with drive stuff including air suspension, uh, automatic LED cornering lights that dip themselves at night and a radar controlled adaptive cruise control setup that keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway. Uh, what else? Uh, well, there's a powered tailgate. You get keyless entry, a rear view camera, all round parking sensors, vegan leather upholstery, a rear climate control zone and power folding electrochromatic mirrors you can talk to your Tesla center about adding a tow bar. Uh, this Model S can now tow up to 1600 kilograms, though that option wasn't available as we filmed. But apart from all that, there aren't really any other options, though at the time of filming, Tesla were talking about being able to offer UK customers the track pack that's available in the German market. This gives you forged alloy wheels with ceramic brakes. Finally, a word on safety. The Model S was designed from the ground up to be one of the safest cars on the road, as proven by a five-star rating in all categories of both the Euro NCAP and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, that's the NHTSA crash tests. Now much of its prowess in this area is owed to the placement of the electric drivetrain that sits beneath the car's aluminium occupant cell in its own subframe. This positioning minimizes rollover risk and replaces a typical heavy engine block with impact absorbing boron steel rails. It also gives this Tesla a very low center of gravity and makes it almost impossible to roll over. The NHTSA tried to do that in their tests and broke their testing rig while trying to flip the car over with a 4G impact that would have seen some other rival models barrel rolling. It effectively withstands side impacts too, thanks to aluminium pillars reinforced with steel rails to reduce intrusion, protecting occupants and the battery pack while improving roof stiffness. The NHTSA tried to evaluate this with a side impact test they thought would be absolutely punishing. After the dust settled, the internal volume of the car was measured against pre-impact results and Model S was found to have retained an astonishing 63.5% of its driver residual space. In a Volvo put through the same test, that figure was just 7.8%. Anything that can make a Volvo seem a bit feeble has to be something special. 
Of course, no car is infallible, so as you'd expect, this one offers the kind of complete protection that you'd require at this price point, including eight airbags with twin front side curtain and knee bags included. Plus, it's good to know that should you have a crash, the battery system will automatically disconnect the main power source. Uh, in addition, of course, all uh, versions of the Model S also come with the usual electronic aids for braking, traction and stability control. What you're going to want to know about, though, is the camera and radar safety stuff controlled by the autopilot system that's standard on this car. Autopilot doesn't mean the car can completely drive itself, though Tesla has engineered it to be able to do that. Uh, legislation doesn't yet allow it. So Autopilot instead contents itself with offering the usual semi-autonomous drive assist tools. Now, there's nothing particularly notable here, uh, just stuff, stuff like a lane keep assist system, a lane following feature, and the adaptive cruise control setup that we mentioned earlier. Plus, there's also a lane departure avoidance system and speed limit warning, uh, along with forward collision warning and an active emergency braking, autonomous braking system. Expect potentially more sophisticated features to be automatically added uh, to the software of the autopilot system during your period of ownership. Once upon a time, as an EV buyer, you bought a Tesla because of its vast advantage in operating range over any other battery-powered car on the market. Now today, things are a little different. The 394 mile WLTP rated range from the 100 kWh battery of the standard dual motor Model S is a showing nearly matched by a rival Mercedes EQE 350 at 388 miles, though significantly better than a standard 89 kWh Porsche Taycan S, which manages 348 miles. If you could stretch, to just over £100,000 for a Mercedes EQS 450 Plus though, you'd get up to 453 miles. This top Model S played version's 373 mile range uh, is way better than that of a comparably priced Mercedes AMG EQE 53 4Matic Plus, which manages 291 miles, and also looks good against its nearest performing direct rival, Porsche's Taycan Turbo GT, 345 miles, though it's worth mentioning that an ordinary Taycan Turbo would take you 394 miles. As with any EV, what you get from this Tesla in the real world is of course another question. On this test with this played version, we've been getting regular consumption of around 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, which isn't really that much better than we were getting from this car back when we originally tested it in 2013. Despite the larger, more efficient battery, the sleeker aerodynamics, 0.208 CD is industry leading, and the weight savings that Tesla's tried to make. This played version, for instance, weighs 45 kilograms less, 2,162 kilograms, than the performance model it replaced. The center screen's energy section has a miles consumed graph which compares your actual consumption with the energy usage that the car predicted at the beginning of your trip. Even if you ignore driving range figures, there's still a compelling reason to choose a Model S over an EV from another brand and it'll be obvious when the time comes to pull back the neatly disguised panel around the offside rear light cluster and replenish your battery power. We'll get to that unique selling point in a moment, but first let's cover charging speeds. Both versions of this Model S charge at up to 250 kilowatts. It's, it's still a 400 volt charging system though, so you won't have access to the ultra rapid 350 kilowatt ultra rapid public charges that you'd be able to use to full capacity with the rival Porsche Taycan or Audi e-tron GT Quattro, both cars that boast the 800 volt charging infrastructure that presumably Tesla will upgrade to at some point. At present, the company thinks this step to be unnecessary and they could be right as it is 
a fast DC public charging point would replenish the 100 kilowatt hour battery, 95 kilowatt hour of which is usable from 10 to 80 percent in 30 minutes or from 10 to 90 percent in 38 minutes. Now to that unique selling point. This US brand is still the only manufacturer that's had the guts to put itself on the line by going out and creating its own exclusive high power charging network, the Tesla Supercharger Network, which now features over 1,400 charging points spread across over 100 locations throughout the UK. Venture abroad and you'll find over 12,000 supercharger locations in Europe with 50,000 worldwide. In Britain, the most southerly supercharger site location is uh, Lifton in Devon and the most northerly one is at Aviemore in Scotland. Each of these sites are only accessible to Tesla drivers. On top of that, there are the superchargers fitted in the brand's dealer network. And the company has installed a further 550 less powerful but still very useful so-called destination chargers in clubs, uh, hotels and other public locations around the country. Also exclusive to Tesla drivers and there to charge your car over a few hours. In other words, if you drive a Model S or any other Tesla, you're far more likely to be able to undertake a longer trip with mid-journey charging at a convenient point than you would be if you bought a different EV from another premium brand. That's a crucial advantage, particularly with the current patchy state of the European public EV charging infrastructure, especially as this Tesla can also be recharged at nearly all the other places other makers' electric vehicles can plug in. Earlier Model S's, which lacked the necessary CCS adapter, couldn't do this. In terms of other charging stations, your best bet is to find one of the 150 kilowatt Ionity charging points, but there still aren't as many of these around the UK as there should be. Websites like ZapMap are good for helping you find your nearest public charger. Or you could use your Model S's infotainment screen to organize your journey between charge stations. The car's trip planner will automatically guide you to a nearby supercharger if charging is required on your journey. Uh, your Tesla will even direct you to the least busy supercharger site, advising how long to stay to charge, uh, aiming to keep your battery within 20 to 80 percent when charging speeds are fastest at 250 kilowatts. Tesla's supercharger network has 99.5% uptime and at the period of filming costs levied were around 50 pence per kilowatt hour based on 250 kilowatt charging speeds. Obviously most of your charging with this car will be done at home once you've had fitted the 7.4 kilowatt wall box that you couldn't really own this car without. Home charging with this car from empty to full takes 15 hours 15 minutes. If you're home or business uh, has an 11 kilowatt three phase supply you could cut that time down to around 10 hours. Either way it means that the usual EV manufacturer claim of full overnight charging is only just about justified and won't add up at all if you happen to have a late night and an early start. The car responds best to nightly recharges but will happily sit for a couple of weeks at an airport while you holiday without losing significant charge and the battery pack has no memory effect. Now over longer stationary periods the batteries will slowly lose their charge. If left at a 0% state of charge for a period of time you may need a battery replacement. The batteries are guaranteed for eight years with a full replacement billed at 12,000 US dollars. As usual, Tesla will sell you its own branded wall connector for your garage, which offers charging speeds of up to 44 miles of range per hour, has a 7.3 meter cable, and costs 475 pounds, excluding installation. When it comes to home charging, there's still complexity around the best charging hardware to choose and who is eligible for a government grant. And obviously the costs can vary depending on the distance from your main meter to the charger and other factors. 
Now, there's lots of advice out there, of course, to guide you. Uh, we consulted plugmein.com. You offer customers everything from choice of charger to installation and ongoing maintenance. Now, they've advised us that even with increased energy prices, the cost of running an EV and charging it at home on a dedicated tariff is still only around half the cost of running your previous petrol or diesel car. If you don't charge at home, the story is very different, of course. Uh, some DC public chargers, even Tesla superchargers, can be just as, or even more, expensive as filling up with petrol. Obviously, you can keep your costs down by using an EV-specific energy tariff and by sticking to off-peak energy rates. Setting charging times to do this can, of course, be done via the car's center screen, via a dedicated charging section. Or, of course, uh, by the Tesla app. The same app can also allow you to preset the climate in your car before you reach it so that you don't have to strain the battery with a big initial need for cabin heating or cooling when you get in. And the app can quickly tell you where to find nearby Tesla supercharging and destination charging locations. It would be even better, of course, if you were able to charge up using solar energy generated from panels on the roof of your house. Well, if your home has these solar charging panels that work with a photovoltaic system, the car can be set to charge preferentially using sunlight sourced electricity and can even be set to charge in line with forecast phases of sunshine. Tesla makes solar panels, by the way and can also provide a power wall home battery which the last time we looked cost an extra £6,350 to conveniently store all the energy that any brand of solar panelling will produce. If you're new to EVs you might be slightly put off by all the potential charging issues but then again you might not. After all it's pretty unlikely that a typical Model S owner will be running this Tesla as an only car and we're perfectly aware that the average person's daily round-trip commute is about a tenth of the operating range of this Tesla. Ah yes, range, we're back to that. Other EVs provide almost endless driver tools for maximizing this, things like uh, efficiency modes, uh, eco settings and primarily a proliferation of brake regeneration options aimed at allowing you to either reduce or increase the amount of energy harvested as you slow the car. There's little of that here. It's surprising that Tesla doesn't feel the need to involve the driver more in the energy harvesting process. There is, of course, a regenerative braking system, but here it works automatically, allowing the powertrain to reclaim spent energy as you cruise, slow or stop. As you take your foot off the accelerator, the electric motors work in reverse, becoming generators of electricity to recharge the battery. In fact, on a hilly road, it's possible to gain much of the energy that you use going uphill through regenerative braking on the way down. As you'd expect, the car's central screen offers lots of data to help plan your electric driving life. We've already mentioned how both this monitor and the associated app can brief you on your plug-in program and on charging locations. And of course, there are the usual real-time battery status readouts. But your Model S can certainly be a lot more proactive than that. Put a destination into the navigation system and it will helpfully tell you the proportion of battery charge that you'll still have when you reach where you're going and the proportion that you'll have when you arrive back home. If the destination you've chosen can't be reached with the driving range you have available then charging points along the route will be selected for you. And once you set off the calculations continue based on your driving style so you'll be advised if for example you're cruising at too fast a speed to reach your destination on the charge available. What else might you need to know? Maybe you'll be interested in the fact that as an EV owner until 2025 you'll be exempt from London congestion charge and ULEZ charges and until that time you won't pay VED car tax and benefit in kind taxation will be at a super low 2%. 
Now, at the time of this test, in early spring 2024, that BIK tax figure saw 20% taxpayers levied at £384 a year, while 40% taxpayers were BIK levied at £767 a year. As for ownership peace of mind, well, the Tesla warranty, four years and 50,000 miles, has pluses and minuses compared to the usual three-year, 60,000 mile packages offered by obvious rivals. It's a bit low on the mileage side, but it covers you against most faults. As usual with an EV, the battery and drive unit get their own warranty. Uh, here it's an eight-year package that lasts for 120,000 miles and the package guarantees a minimum 70% retention of battery capacity throughout the plan's duration. Achieving that figure is unlikely to be an issue as Tesla has an excellent reputation for battery longevity. Maintenance is obviously more straightforward than it would be for a combustion engine model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. There's no fuel tank, no exhaust system and obviously no internal combustion engine. You wouldn't think that though to look at the service intervals needed by some of this car's direct rivals. Uh, with the Model S, no annual service is required at all. Um, owners only need to bring their cars in to check certain components at specific intervals. Tesla doesn't state when they should be, uh, the car will inform you if it needs attention. However, uh, the brand recommends checking the brake fluid and the interior air filter every two years. Over the year, updates and remote diagnostics will help make some smaller maintenance jobs easier to carry out, and Tesla's mobile service technicians are also there to make your ownership life more convenient. There's a service section of the center screen's car menu, which briefs you on tire pressures and allows you to use a provided car wash mode. Less good news is found when it comes to insurance group ratings for this Model S, a top of the shop Group 50 rating for either variant. Brokers, it seems, don't like electric cars. Uh, they're afraid of the cost of replacing the complex drive system after a complete wreck. However, don't give up a hope of relatively affordable insurance cover. LV offers a specific package for EV drivers and Tesla has negotiated a special deal with Direct Lion that a lot of its owners use. Ultimately, though you might pay a little more to insure a Model S than would be the case with a direct rival, if you let Tesla guide you, you'll find that it won't be that much more. You might also expect gloomy news when it comes to the issue of residual values. Well, independent experts are saying that both Model S variants should retain around 50% of their value over three years and 36,000 miles. Now, that's not terrible, but we have to point out that it lags behind what you get from a rival Porsche Taycan or Mercedes EQE. Uh, we also have to say that at present none of these EVs are getting anywhere near those predicted residual values in the real world. What about the green issues? Some in the green lobby get very angry about the whole pure electric car, zero emissions ethos, reckoning that this ignores the well-to-wheel demands of supplying the electricity that powers cars of this kind. Well, we'd respond by pointing out that these people usually completely overlook the fact that CO2 figures for conventional cars fail to take into account the logistical cost of getting fuel to the pump. Still, if you're one of those enviro-conscious folk, we'll tell you that using a well-to-wheels calculation based on typical use of the UK's energy grid, taking an average UK grid CO2 contribution of 367 grams per kilowatt, the burden of filling your batteries in this car would result in a theoretical 85 grams per kilometre of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. Now that's certainly good, but it's some way from being completely green which is also a comment you could apply to electric vehicle engineering as a whole. Lithium-ion batteries aren't yet completely recyclable in the way that the fuel cells used in hydrogen-powered vehicles are. Currently, when EV vehicles are reaching the end of their lives, uh, the batteries are being reused as electricity storage buffers. After that, though, they can't simply be scrapped because lithium-ion has explosive elements. That's an issue but then so is the pollution caused by combustion power. 
If you see the EV solution as the lesser of the two evils and your choice of a battery powered model must be from the large luxury part of the premium segment, then we think you'll still find plenty to interest you here. Some cars are important, others are significant, but only a very few are game-changing. This is one of those, for so many reasons. It proves America capable of world-leading automotive design. It makes luxury motor incredible in an eco-friendly world. And most significantly of all, the production life of this Model S has marked the period from which the market's perception of battery-charged cars has begun to change. With this car and the subsequent designs which have followed it, Tesla has shown that electric power need no longer be seen as a restrictive influence, but can be a liberating one. It's a design that could probably only have come from Silicon Valley, a car that could perhaps only have been developed by a company also specializing in advanced rockets and spacecraft. A brand that could certainly only have been founded by an entrepreneur who refuses to be constrained by the bounds of convention. Despite all of this, this much improved Model S will struggle for significance in our market because of the left-hand drive only format disappointingly adopted for this extensively revised design. If it wasn't for that, you might be prepared to overlook the issues that Tesla still has to address with this car. Uh, the lack of steering feel, the absence of a combined friction and regen braking system, uh, the need for greater driver control over energy harvesting, and a lack of the kind of overtly opulent cabin luxury that you might expect at this price point. After all, there's also so much to like the frantic power of this played version, the enormous boot, the reasonable value pricing, and the convenience of that industry-leading supercharger public charging network. Overall, what hasn't changed about a Model S is that it still rewards those in search of something a little different in a car like this. These are people who realize that they won't find inspiration in the places they've already been. They understand that to move forward, you have to do something different. You, you have to go somewhere new. That's what Tesla has done while the rest of the motor industry watched and hedged its bets. In doing so, this American brand created a car that has done nothing less than rewrite the rule book. Mm -hmm.